So let's talk about things that people buy. And let's talk about Walmart for a second. So over the weekend, um, Walmart made a couple announcements, actually going into the weekend. And they were saying they were really gonna get out of the direct-to-consumer brand business. And this, this marks the end of a, a big era for Walmart. And here's what happened. We all know who Bonobos is, right? Am I saying that right? I don't ever, I don't ever buy, I've never bought any of those, you know, anything that brand, but Bonobos. I think and, so. And they, um, Walmart sold them for $75 million. And it's a fashion brand. And it's a markdown from the $310 million Walmart paid for them for this men's fashion brand in 2017. I think it was 2017, yeah, I think so. So I think it's been exactly six years. So in six years, 75% of the value. So in other words, Walmart, um, and what is the Walmart brand? Great, uh, great value? Is that the Walmart brand? Yeah, I, I think it's great value. I think Walmart's brand is a thing called, you know, great value. And so it's on light bulbs, it's on macaroni, on a lot of things and it's on towels. And so Walmart sells that as a store brand. Well, what Walmart did is they got into direct to consumer and they bought a bunch of fashion brands that they were gonna have at Walmart. And you know what, this stuff, there is a long line of efforts that have been made by Pennies, by Sears, by Target, over the years to bring a celebrity in with a celebrity brand into Target. But then you see people just kind of go into that, the basic house brands because that's what Target and Walmart are known for, a reasonable quality house brand. And here they go. And so um, this was actually Walmart selling Bonobos at this markdown price was the last of five e-commerce that they bought. Now check this out. Um, they bought, uh, what else did they sell? They sold mod cloth. Shoes.com, Moose Jaw, uh, the, and Bare Necessities, and Eloqui. Eloqui. They sold all those. Uh, they sold Eloqui in April 2023, sold Bare Necessities in, in August of 2020. Um, they, and then they uh, sold Moose Jaw. I think Dick Sporting Good bought Moose Jaw. I'm not sure about that, but I thought they sold that. And um, they were out buying all this stuff to augment the brands in Walmart. And Walmart missed the mark here. People come to Walmart for great value and they're curating other brands that they're bringing into Walmart that they're selling at Walmart. A bunch of sporting goods you can go back there. You can get Nike shoes at Walmart. You get a variety of things. And here they were bringing in brands and now they're gonna be owning and managing these brands. No, Walmart forgot who it was. And let me explain what, that, what I mean. Let's do a little case study here. Walmart is a retailer. A retailer is a distributor. A distributor distributes and retails stuff. You don't get out there in the stuff business except for your base value house brand. So they're like, we're gonna get everything from batteries to dishcloths on this house brand and we're gonna sell it. And that's what we're gonna do. But everything else we're gonna put in there, good, better, best, and we're gonna give you other choices throughout the store to, for opportunities to buy. That is a retailer and a distributor. It makes perfect sense to have the entry level house brand and then to select what's hot, what's not, and sell that stuff. That's it, you're a retailer. But somewhere Walmart decided, you know, um, back in 2017 timeframe, six years ago, to start buying crap. And they bought a bunch of these things. And now they've spent the last four years saying, oh, I shouldn't have done that, 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 and selling these things. And so you, you have basically, and this applies to anyone. Let's say you're in business, you're a small business person and you are in the landscaping business and you got landscaping and you got trucks and you got guys and you've got zones of the, of the community that you've got tremendous market share because your guys do a really good job, good job edging, good job in the flower beds, you know, as they say, cut, mow, and blow, they, you know, cut the shrubs, mow the grass, blow all the, the trimmings off, make it nice and beautiful for when you come home, it looks sharp. And that's what you want. Well, all of a sudden you decide, well, wait a minute. You know, maybe I can get into tree pruning. And so you get into tree pruning. Well, that makes sense because while you're, 
doing basic landscaping, you look up and you tell people, he says, you know, I do tree trimming and I've got insurance and we could trim your trees. Okay, so you get into tree trimming, that's fine. And then all of a sudden you decide that you're gonna get into building decks. Because you notice whenever you go around, you'll see older decks and you say, maybe these people need someone to come along, give them a bid and to rebuild their back patio deck. Doesn't look so nice anymore. And I'm visiting all these houses. I could see all these customers every week. I could just knock on doors. Hey, I'm, every, I'm here every week, cutting your grass, trimming your trees. And I noticed your back deck. And so you'll get a contract license. Stop. That is a perfect example of now the teams that you have doing landscaping and now tree trimming, you've got these trucks, you've got this equipment. Now some of it's similar, but now you gotta get a general contractor license. And now, you gotta, now you're competing against every contractor that's gonna be doing those back decks. That is an example of now you're crossing over to something that seems logical, but it's actually not and it's not gonna help you, and you think you can make more money doing it. I would say find three or four great contractors that do backyard spaces and make a deal with them. If I can refer to you, will you give me a couple hundred bucks for referring you? Because I cut people's lawns and I'm on good terms with them, I know them really well, I do tree trimming, and I could tell them, hey, your, your back deck's looking a little sad there. I know somebody that does complete refurbishes your back deck, including proper drainage and all the things that goes with that. Um, I know a guy, his name is Fred, his name is Javier, go talk to him. That's the way to do it. Walmart decided they were gonna get in to being the at-risk brand. Walmart is a retailer, a distributor, a hero-making machine. If you're willing to bid your wholesale cost low enough for Walmart, and that's a case study for another day. <laughs> but they went out and they bought these brands. Oh, we'll put the brands in there, they'll be our brands, and we'll make money on the brand, and we'll make money on distribution. That was the thinking. We're gonna make the, hey, we'll make margin on the stuff, and we'll also make the retail margin that we normal make at the register. So we'll make margin at the factory, margin at the register. So it seems logical until people fall out of love with some of the brands you buy. Now what? Well, guess what? Walmart sells them all off, and one of them is sold at a 75% discount to its pre previous price. Can you believe that? And so there's other pain in there, too, because there's some brands that weren't even bought by Walmart. And let's go check this out. Show me the, um, the chart that shows Warby Parker and a few others here. So check this out. <clears throat> These are all fashion brands. Now, fashion brand is what people call a hit-driven business. A hit-driven business is this. Music, movies. You make five movies, four of them are only so-so, two of them don't even make it to the box office. The, the old thing that you should be able to read about in the movie business is straight to video. You know, you had a couple bad Steven Seagal movies that just go straight to video and straight to HBO. They never make it to the box office. That's a hit-driven business. You have to have a Titanic where you make buckets of money to make up for the, the ones that are complete losers. But when you add everything together, you have a business that makes a profit even though you're in the hit-driven business and it could be feast or famine. Well, check this out. <coughs> Fashion is a hit-driven business. If you've been in business forever, like Tom Ford and your classic, and then, um, who bought Tom Ford? Estee Lauder? I think so. Yeah, for like $2.6 billion. Who looked that up for me? Yeah. And feed me that back. So that's one thing. But then there's a lot of people that haven't been around very long. And let's go take a look. Allbirds, Warby Parker, and Bonobos. So here you have it. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If it's Bonobos or Bonobos. <laughs> Either Sounds way, right to me. it's... <laughs> I'll just change it to no cash boss instead of <laughs> banal boss. It's like no cash boss, no sales boss. So you can see here market cap of 310 million, now evaluation of 75 million. Warby Parker at the IPO, a market cap of $4.5 billion. Now a market cap of $1.2 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, if that was $1.3, 
that would be, at 1.5, that would be 33%. So it's below 33%. It's like 30% of what the market cap was. Somebody lost a whole lot of money on Warby Parker on the way down. You know, you don't need a new pair of glasses to see that that sucks, you know? <laughs> so not to pick on Warby Parker, they make glasses. <laughs> but then you have Allbirds, $2.1 billion. Now you could have it for 190 million. Holy cow. You know, there's a problem there. Well, guess what? Those are new fashion brands that are in the hit-driven business. So if you're Walmart, you don't want to be in the hit-driven business. You're in the low-cost distributor, reach every American through Walmart and Sam's Club business. You're in the retailer distributor business. Don't forget who you are. Even mighty Walmart can forget who they are. Oh, by the way, remember they went into digital online? They were gonna compete with um, Amazon and they bought, uh, who'd they buy, Jet? I think they bought Jet. They wrote it off. They wrote it off. Okay. So the answer is, you, if you're gonna be the new Amazon, but you're also gonna be Walmart, you know, I understand what Walmart's thinking. We gotta take a risk. But this is an example of taking a risk of being a general contractor and being the best landscaper in your city that do everything. You plant trees, you cut trees up that have come down from a, an ice storm, you prune trees and you make yards look beautiful. That's your business and you know every inch of it. Um, getting into being a general contractor would not be smart. But here's a perfect example of somebody as, even as big as Walmart making a mistake like that and forgetting who you are and getting into the hit-driven fashion business rather than being in the kingmaker retail and distribution business.